Hello, thank you for joining. Uh, my name is Tyso Phillips. I'm an Associate Professor of Medicine at City of Hope Comprehensive Cancer Center in Duarte, California. And today I'm gonna to talk to you about uh, mantle cell lymphoma. So um, for those of you who are familiar with lymphoma, for those of you who are not, uh, lymphoma is a blood cancer uh, that is typically driven by a blood cell called lymphocytes, uh, which are very important for our immunity. As you can see from this pie chart, mantle cell lymphoma is a very rare form of uh, what we call non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, accounting for only about 6% of cases diagnosed in the United States and in Western Europe. Um, the disease prevalence does change in other parts of the world. Um, and as we will see, uh, as we discuss, it does seem to have a predication for certain um, populations of patients uh, within Europe and the United States. So typically when the patient with mantle cell lymphoma presents in front of me in the clinic, uh, the first thing that we would uh, typically like to do uh, is discuss some of the uh, characteristics of the cancer and sort of how we place you into a box. Uh, mantle cell lymphoma is very heterogeneous in a way of the meaning that not every patient who comes to the clinic will present the same way, will have the same course with treatment, or will have the same long-term outcomes. So I think for most patients, the easiest thing for me to do is to put you in a box of what we call indolent, uh, which is another way of just saying the cancer grows slowly. Uh, and for those patients, as you see down below, uh, we can typically watch these patients for very long periods of time. And these patients do very well without much of any type of treatment. As the disease progresses or becomes older in that sense in patients, we do sometimes see certain uh, mutations creep in that can impact clinical outcome, but for the most part, these are the patients who do the best uh, when it comes to mantle cell lymphoma, uh, but we do not have a very good way of identifying these patients. So if a patient were to come into my clinic today, there's not anything that I can sort of look at in their physical sort of uh, characteristics or in some of the labs that we get, or even the tissue biopsy that's going to let me know whether this person will have an indolent course or one of the other two courses that are to the right. So this is something that we have to sort of tease out with just time. So as the patient sort of goes along and they go longer and longer and longer without needing treatment, we can determine whether they are indolent or whether they fall into the other two categories. Now the next box is what we call classical mantle cell lymphoma, and that will be the majority of most patients diagnosed with this disease. And what that generally means is that uh, we can typically expect that these patients will need some sort of treatment within the first year of diagnosis. Uh, when we treat these patients, we sort of treat based on two factors. One is chronological age, meaning how old the patient is, and the other is for the fitness, which sort of gets you to your real age. Um, because again, um, if you are young by chronological age, meaning say you're you know less than 60, less than 65, and you're in very poor health, meaning your true age is much older than we tend to treat you less aggressively, whereas if you are a patient 65 and below and you have very good health and fitness, uh, you typically get can and will be treated a bit more aggressively as you can probably tolerate more intensity of the chemotherapy. The good thing for this group of patients um, is that even though their overall survival and long-term outcome is not the same as indolent patients, we do see improvement as time has gone along. And in the last several years, the long-term outcomes of these patients, the prospective long-term outcome has improved quite a bit, or expects most of these patients to live a very long time, 10 plus years, uh, which is significantly better where, than what we had historically seen where these patients were living three to five years. Now, one point that I did not mention is mantle cell lymphoma, unfortunately, is incurable uh, with current treatment. So irrespective of the box that you fall in, we do not think that we're gonna be able to cure you from this cancer. Uh, it is something that we will continue to have to treat as time goes along. And the last box is what we call aggressive. Uh, this typically means that your cancer presents aggressively, uh, and which means that we do need to start treatment right away. Uh, there are certain features that we can use to identify aggressive patients, such as uh, how angry the cells look under the microscope when the other doctors look at it, how fast the cancer is growing. Uh, and typically these will lead to more aggressive features in the cancer. And as would be expected, these typically leads to poor outcomes as patients with these sort of aggressive lymphomas, uh, aggressive mantle cell lymphomas, uh, do not typically respond as well to our standard treatments and typically do not live as long as the other two categories we discussed previously. So, uh, and this whole nutshell, again, as I said, as you can see from the three different boxes, just 
it just further cements the sort of varying presentations and clinical outcomes uh, that we can see in patients with mantle cell lymphoma. So again, it should not be a box treatment for patients. It should be patients are treated on an individual basis based on sort of their presentation, sort of what you come to the clinic with as far as symptoms and how your disease sort of progresses over time. So to summarize, <clears throat> mantle cell lymphoma is a rare form of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Uh, patients are typically older, usually 65 and above, uh, and this cancer does have a high male predominance <clears throat> where there's maybe a three or four to one male to female ratio. Uh, for this reason, why this is, we do not know, but again, it is much more prevalent meaning it occurs much more frequently in males than it does in females. As I stated before, the disease is currently incurable uh, in the majority of the patients. It is very rare that we'll be able to cure mantle cell lymphoma. Uh, some scenarios that can occur is when we do find the cancer very early on, uh, it can be cured with radiation or in a situation where a patient gets an allogeneic stem cell transplantation and we can get cured that way. Um, outcomes and presentations are variable. And certain characteristics that are present in the cancer do impart worse outcomes. We did not go into details with this, but these are some of the features when you meet a physician they may look for and speak to you about, uh, which is deletion or mutation of a protein called P53, uh, sort of how fast the cancer grows, the high proliferation rate, and the aggressive physical characteristics of the tumor cells, which we refer to as morphology. This is something that the pathologist, which is a doctor who sort of helps us make the diagnosis, will find by looking under the microscope. So just to summarize our treatment in frontline mantle cell lymphoma, uh, there is no standard of care currently. Um, older patients are typically treated with bendamustine and rituximab. Uh, there are several ongoing studies looking at adding additional drugs to this regimen or avoidance of chemotherapy altogether, uh, which we did not get into, uh, but does emphasize the, the, the need and sort of the, uh, the, the ex expectation patients should have that if there are clinical trials available, Clinical trial participation is something that you really should look into if you have mantle cell lymphoma, because if we don't have a standard of care, that typically does mean that we are still needing to make improvements uh, in our current regimen. Um, for younger patients, high-dose chemotherapy followed by stem cell transplantation has been the norm. Uh, maintenance for tuximab has a survival benefit and is an important piece to consider. Uh, newer studies, again, as we discussed, are evaluating the addition of oral medications to chemotherapy to avoid transplantation. And again, similar to with the older patients, is chemotherapy even needed? Again, plugging in here again, the importance of clinical trials for patients with this disease as we continue to try to make strides to improve treatments, uh, adverse events, and overall outcomes for patients with mantle cell lymphoma.